Thank you very much, Titus, for inviting me here. Our chief guests, that is His Excellency Karanza Musioka, His Excellency Mustina Mudavadi, His Honorable Gideon Moy, Honorable Tangura, and my brother, Jirongo. Let me start by saying that Mount Kenya, they are listening as much as they are seeing you from where they are because we are alive. Mount Kenya are also aware that we are going through succession process where when we are going to have a new leader after the term of His Excellency Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. They know because they've been there for some time that when there is succession, people need to be informed of who would be their leaders and what they would do for them so that they can select them with wisdom and that knowledge. Success, succession is as old as we are, as, as the, the, the history of the world. It all started during the Jesus time. He had 12 apostles. When he was just about to go through his crucifixion, they started murmuring who would take over from Jesus. And they happened to get to know that that was happening. And I told them, yes, I know this is the debate you have. I think they had gone for a workshop to discuss about that. And he said, let that not bother you because among you who would want to be the servant of the others is the one that will take over from me. Similarly, the one who take over from his excellence, the president of Uhuru Kenyatta, is who is he or she who is prepared to be a servant of the 45 or 50 million Kenyans. And that's the man or woman that we're trying to identify, we from Mount Kenya. We also know that when there is succession debate, many other people crop up to see whether they are lucky also to succeed the retiring boss. We go to the same Bible and you find two brothers being taken with, to their mother by their mother to see Jesus and to campaign that when Jesus has gone to his kingdom, he will appoint his two sons, that is James and John, one to sit on the left and the other one to, to sit on the, on the right. They were looking for a position of leadership, nothing else. So again, don't blame anybody who is trying to fulfill his ambition of wanting to read. So we in Mount Kenya, as you have been told by 
Titus, are business people. We are also agriculture, agriculturists. We trade with our crops. We trade with anything that is sellable at a profit, so long as it's allowed by the government all the day. And therefore, the leader we are looking for is that one who will give us the environment to do that trade. Whether here in Nairobi, in Nakuru, in Mombasa, anywhere in the entire country. That's the leader that the Mount Kenya is looking for. So as you go to speak to them, during the campaign period or before, that's what they will be looking for. They will also be looking for inspiration. For you to inspire them. For you to give them hope. Even, even the young ones, the youth, what they need today is actually hope that there is life even in the conditions at which they are. Don't remind them that they are poor. Because in Mount Kenya, we don't believe anybody is poor, particularly when he's young. We say, and there are many kikus here, Do you all know that? And the property is actually in his hands. Because he's young, he will make it and become rich and attain all that he aspires to. So encourage them. The moment you inspire them, and they will see very many following you, even without facilitation. But if you believe so much of facilitation, as a substitute of inspiration, it's upon you. They are ready to take it. <laughs> so, before I sit down and to give an example of what my friend Titus was saying. I'll remind you, I'll remind one of us here sitting in my, on my table what happened in 2007. I knew, together with my friends, also from the mountain, that there was no peace, without peace in this country, nothing good would happen. And therefore, we took it upon ourselves to go and persuade a candidate that time to join the other candidate. We went there at 6 o'clock so that we don't disturb their supper. But, and we stayed there until 6 o'clock the following day without convincing him to join the candidate that we preferred. It was myself, James Mwangi, and the, the, the late Chris Kerubi. God put his soul in peace. If that friend of ours had accepted our requests, the so famous, the very famous and famous post election violence, of 208, 207, 208, would not have occurred. Because that friend of ours then got 800 votes, 800,000. And our candidate needed that so that at least the, his margin would be have bigger, would have been bigger. 
it was actually very good faith that he refused to take our offer. Because he said, well, I don't want to lose my political ambition. Because after doing that, I may not be listened to when I seek a, a seat in a big office. Whether that is true or not, he was able to convince us. The story I'm giving you, telling you the consequences which happened, is with no, for, uh, no other than Stephen Caronzo. Who is here with us? So what he was trying to avoid is a situation whereby he would seek higher office after agreeing to what we are requesting. I thought, I thought, I thought that was what is happening. The same may be said even today, that among us, the five who are here, they may not want to curtail the ambition because of the fear that uh, the f of what they think the future holds for them. But the benefits of uniting is much bigger for Kenya than you. <laughs> Fortunately, for His Excellency Karanza Musioka, after we had won in that contest, and good dreams about him, he became the vice president of the government that was formed then. But again, without him, it was going to be extremely difficult for Mwaike Baki to form his government because he did not have enough members of parliament. So, his Excellency Karazno Musioka of Waipa was led and willing to join him as we had asked him earlier on. But this was after things had happened. People had been killed and other things had happened. But it was calm after he had joined him. So thank you very much, Your Excellency, for that. So I thought of giving you that story because it's true. It's only a, how many years ago? 15 years ago. I have not grown an extra gray hair <laughs> since then. So it is very memorable in me. And also to His Excellency, Karanza Musioka. We are very lucky today, Mount Kenya Foundation. Because I don't remember any other gathering other than a political gathering that had an opportunity to entertain or to host two former vice presidents. <laughs> they are among us, that's Musila Mundavad and His Excellency Stephen Caronzo Musioka. So we are lucky. There is something to be proud of uh, because of today's occasion. As I said earlier, about our community, they, anybody has to be called poor. He may be poor, but he has a future. And there's many ways of becoming rich, according to our belief. You can become rich by working extremely hard and getting money and other properties. But you can also become rich through the bed. Do you understand that? Eh? The bed, when you go to bed, you may also become rich. So the moment is somebody calls you poor. In any case, those who are announcing to the whole world that we are multi-billionaires, we are tycoons, 
May God hear their prayers. <laughs> so that we can redouble what we have. Let, let them go on saying that and the newspaper do carry that, those messages. And also the FM radio. So when I, am, I walk in Muranga or wherever I come from, those people who know me, they know they will see a multi-billionaire there. And they will respect me. <laughs> they will not throw stones to me. Because I have said that. It's not a curse. It's never a curse. In our community. So with those few remarks,